I'm here to yell at you. Quite rare. When it, when is this going? Today, Finish. tomorrow, next day, well, next month, next it. year. Yeah, just do it for next year. Pick up. When Zippo. It's when it's ready. So. Could you have it done for you tomorrow? That'd be good. Good. So basically, that's your answer. Is you just leave it blank because it's when you're ready. When ready. See, that wasn't too hard, was it? What well, it was? Speedo. Was there, is there it, any reason you? that we put that there? Is that just to take it's up a, a little bit? Thing, really. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your pen, too. Thanks for visiting, brother. I don't know yet. I can't. I couldn't see because it was just smoke everywhere. Just do it once more. Have you given me job cards for um, both of those? 
Have I? Yeah. Yeah. For David Todd's? Yeah. I'm in shock. You walked all the way over here to question me and you didn't even get on the bench. Because it's the first time it's ever happened and that's because the camera's rolling. I, I think you're actually coming <laughs> out here because the camera's rolling. <laughs> no. Instead. <laughs> no, not on at all. <laughs> How's my belt? Is my belt turned up? I'm sure that's not the one on the bench. I'm sure it's not that little measly thing. How long does it take to get a belt? Thanks for visiting, Robert. How long does it take to get a belt? Uh, nah. All I can see is just smoke. There's no oil anywhere. Uh, I don't know. It's just bizarre. It's obviously something new. Well. It's never done that out of the engine bay, but then we've never had the exhaust disconnected. Well, you reckon we can't have the exhaust? Well, there's no, there's, you're doing the same thing and there's no, nothing coming out the exhaust. It's only coming out the engine bay. I don't know if it's getting sucked back up. Right. Let's just have a look out of the exhaust, sorry? With the fan off, you wouldn't reckon it would be. Yeah, you'd think so. <laughs> I'll have a look underneath again. Um, turn it off for a sec. I'll just have a good look underneath and see if I can see any oil around the front of the turbos. Uh, when you backed off, uh, it came out the turbos. Uh, but when before that, it wasn't coming out the turbos, it's coming out from in front of the turbos. That's just weird. When you backed off, uh, it came out the turbos. Uh, but when, before that, it wasn't coming out the turbos, it's coming out from in front of the turbos. That's just weird. Because it's not just a little bit, it's freaking mountains of it. We're sending smoke signals to uh, the other side of the country. There's a lot of oil around the uh, intakes. I'll think about them in here. It it's like, like there's masses like... of oil, like, it looks like it's actually coming out of the intakes. Yeah, but how's it, oh, I'm flicking back on the exhaust. Yeah, or something like that. I was thinking that the front of the turbo might be full of oil. That's so. what it's like because if you look at the compressor housing underneath the bottom of it, it's got all yeah. oil dripping off it. Yeah. And then where the silicon hose comes off the intake, yeah. the pipe, there's all oil like come out. Mm. Well, fair enough with the fans on, I was thinking I might be blowing back on the turbine. But, um, with the fans off, you well, I wonder if we uh, just connect the exhaust up again yeah. and see if it Both still lights. does it. Yeah. I'll just go get the bolts. <clears throat> As you can see, we've got a little bit of a problem, a bit of a smoking problem. Um, and the story behind this car is basically. Um, I'll just give these to Paulie. So yeah, so the story behind this car is it's been an absolute headache. We fitted a twin turbo kit to it, as I said, with the low mount turbos using oil pumps to scavenge the um, oil back to the top of the engine because the, oils norm uh, the turbos normally would just use gravity to return the oil back to the sump. But with this uh, particular kit, the turbo sit very low or lower than the oil level so they have to use a pump to scavenge the oil and we've done these kits before and never had a problem for whatever reason this one um, as you saw then under normal driving it's okay as soon as you get some rpm and oil pressure and that's the key high oil pressure um, mixed with high oil temperature um, it starts to smoke um, and we've 
checked everything. We've checked our flow rates, pumps. We've checked the flow rate coming out of the turbos, which was half a litre per turbo. Um, the pump, I believe, is good for three litres per minute. We've got half a litre a minute coming out of each turbo, which equates to a one litre per minute from both. Um, so the pumps actually should be fine. We actually did change the restrictor in feeding into oil into the turbos to reduce the amount of oil going into the turbo. So we thought that <coughs> might uh, fix it. Um, but to be honest with you, nothing that we've changed um, has made any difference. So what we're doing now is just um, drop the exhaust so we can see if it's one particular turbo. And I suppose something that's happened just then, different than what's happened before, is that smoke was coming out of the engine bay um, like oil was on the exhaust manifold, but there is no oil around the exhaust manifolds. Um, so we're just going to connect the exhaust back up again and see what effect that has, whether the smoke then comes out the exhaust or whether maybe we're getting some reversion or something weird going on. But um, this car has certainly proven to be uh, a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, my next, I suppose my next <coughs> thought is that uh, we change the turbos because maybe there's a problem with the turbos, which is be highly unlikely that both turbos would fail. Um, you might get one fail, that's not that unusual, but to have both failing is just, you know, we'd have to be the unluckiest people in the world. Um, basically what this is, is we've got a really good customer of ours who had this engine with a supercharger set up in a VX Commodore and um, what, uh, what he's done is he's bought himself a VE Commodore and we're leaking a bit of water but that's okay. Um, yeah, so what we've done actually is... Um, I better mop that up before someone gets hurt. Bring out the big guns. Yeah, so basically what it is, he's bought himself a VE and um, we've pulled the engine out of the VE and put that into his VX. Now we're going to put this engine back into or put this engine into his VE, his new car, with a different supercharger on it. He wants to change that around. But uh, what we're doing here is obviously before we put it back in his other car while we got it out, I'm just gonna pull a couple of caps off and have a look and just, engine hasn't done a lot of work, but it'd be silly to, to not just have a quick look and make sure that everything's okay with it. All right, so just uh, pulling off the windage tray. Most people know what a windage tray is, but basically what that does is just uh, sort of scavenges the oil away from the crank, um, stops it from, tries to drop the oil back into the sump, um, stops oil from splashing back onto the crank. It's got some washers on here to space it out because with the bigger stroke, what tends to happen is the rod bolts foul on the factory uh, windage tray. I'm going to have a look at the front uh, cap. The main reason for that is because this had a big supercharger hanging off the front of it and typically what we see is they're the ones that um, that actually uh, get the most load and um, would show the most sign of wear. It actually does look a bit ugly. So you can see if you have a look close look at the bearing material you can see we've got a fairly couple of fairly bad scores in there. And you can also see uh, it's had some detonation um, at some stage. Just uh, by the way, it's all sort of flaky there. And you can see some of the bearing material really starting to wear away. It's not right through to the copper yet, but it's not far away from that. So um, based on that, I'm going to pull a couple more caps off and just have a look. But I'd say we'll be pulling it apart just to put rings and bearings in it. Um, so I was seeing the same thing again, definitely had some detonation and definitely uh, see it starting to pick up on the bearing a bit there. So 
I mean, it'll all clean up fine, but um, it confirms basically that, you know, it's worth just have it, pulling it apart. I'm not going to go any further because I'll, uh, I'll pull it all apart at a later stage and just talk to the customer and let him know that's what we want to do. So just um, unpacking uh, the brakes just so I can sort of make sure I've got everything I need. Some hoses, rotors, fixing. This is uh, these are a PBR brake upgrade that's available for um, this particular one's for a, a BF Falcon. Um, it's actually a, a car that we've already fitted a supercharger to, and uh, obviously given it some good performance under acceleration and the customer now wants to improve the braking which is always a good idea that you can stop. They're the dog bones so they're basically what attaches to the factory mounts to adapt these calipers to them. Yeah, So they're a six piston caliper um, for the front and a four piston for the rear. Um, I believe that this caliper setup is what they use uh, on the C6 uh, Corvette or Z06 Corvette sorry. Um, so it comes with front rotors, which are front and rear rotors that are a two-piece rotor. Have a look at those. And um, they're a larger diameter rotor. So they're a three, I think they're a 355 mil rotor. Um, so you can see they're a fair bit bigger than the factory. Um, and just to give you a bit of an idea, we'll go over and have a look. And then you can see it's a fair bit bigger, fair bit thicker, um, two piece. So what I mean by that is you can see here that this is a one piece casting and this is two piece in that it's got a disc and then a hub which is separate and it's got these um, bolts that locate it and sort of bolt the two together. The concept of that is that basically the rotor um, as it heats up can move independently to the hub and when you're doing big braking on a racetrack um, and you're getting heaps of temperature into the rotor, what can happen with a single piece rotor is they can start to warp, um, whereas these allow the, the rotor to grow and move independently to the hub, um, so they're less likely to warp. So that's basically why you go to a two piece rotor. things that they um, supply with the package is braided brake lines and um, the reason for this is basically they give you um, a much better pedal because obviously rubber lines would have a lot more flex in them um, so they give you a much firmer uh, feeling pedal. Um, they're obviously a lot more um, durable and um, yeah they look pretty cool too but um, you know for any sort of high performance slash race application they certainly are a good um, a good addition to uh, a brake system and we, we even see plenty of customers fitting braided brake lines on their standard road cars because it does give the, the pedal a, a definite um, you know nice feel. Pump it up a little bit.
interestingly enough, the right side smokes a lot more than the left. Okay. So if you like, there's still smoke coming out of the left, but the right side, it's a lot thicker. Yeah. And also got a merge as well, so you're always going to get some going yeah. through the side. It must have been getting reversion back, because there's no smoke coming out of the engine yeah. bay now. So how does that work? It should be coming out the dump pipe. Yeah. Well, that's, yep, it. that's it. Take yep. it off. Yep, take it off. Well, I suppose it's um, a little bit inconclusive, but it does sort of still lead me to think that we could have a problem with the turbos. Um, just, you can see how strange it is that it doesn't do it all the time. Normally if a turbo fails or there's a problem with the oil system or something, it'll, um, it'll just or a smoke the whole time. But you can see this, you know, you can do a full run and it won't smoke, there's no smoke. Um, it's only, you have to have it, really it is oil pressure and temperature related. So it's once the oil pressure gets above a certain point, um, you can see it start to smoke up. Um, and that's, it is a high oil pressure, so it's above sort of four and a half bar of oil pressure. Um, as I said earlier, we've checked the flow rates of everything. We've changed the feed going into the turbos to reduce the amount of oil. Um, we've checked the drains, the setup of that. We've add, added a second scavenge pump. None of those things have had any impact on it, which now leads us to believe that it could be turbos, which you know, they're brand new turbos, so the fact that they've both failed, although it, it does appear that maybe one is a little bit worse than the other, is highly unlikely, but um, you sort of get to a point where you just gotta keep trying things to eliminate them, and we're at the point now where probably the only thing we haven't eliminated is the, the turbo, so that's a logical place to, to, um, to start now. Um, you know, it's, it's just not rocket science the way that the oil turbo system works. Uh, the drains and the feeds and all that, it's, you know, the way that's all set up, it should be working. Um, so we'll change the turbo cores over and, um, and yeah, hope that that is the answer to uh, our prayers because the car's been um, a bit of a pain as far as trying to resolve this problem.